whether it's Zouk Malaysia or Zouk Singapore or, um, you know, all of them, I, I like the, the layout and how it makes you, you can fit a lot of people in this club, but it makes everybody feel like they're at home and they're comfortable. It's just a beautiful venue to play at. Hey Zook family, we meet another international superstar DJ and this is no stranger to the Zook brand. Tidy aka Tyson has played not just in KL but in Singapore and at Zook Out. Tyson, how have you been? I have been um, very good considering. Thanks for so having what you, me. What have you been doing during this lockdown period? I mean, you're based in the USA, I guess, right now. Yeah, it's been interesting. Um, I feel like us uh, music producers you know, there's there's obviously the touring side uh, is different, but um, being a music producer and being locked in a studio anyway, it's like we've been preparing for this by accident. <laughs> um, so I've um, I've been using the time to like I've been utilizing it to to make new music and lots of it, probably too much. You can't I, make too much. You can't make too much. Well, I would say that there is, there is that thing because. I, I I've made so many songs that I like, and if you're an when you're an artist and you make something that you that you like, and then you make something two days after that you love even more, you're almost like which one do you like the most? And I'm in this headspace now of not knowing which is the best one, and so I'm having to tell myself to dial it back and and to take an objective view, but. Yeah, uh, writing lots of music is really keeping me sane, if I haven't gone insane already. So <laughs> now you've teased us with this about which songs you're making and which ones you're loving the most. What have you got coming out? What can we look forward to in the next few months from Tidy? Yeah, so well, um, so shameless plug, uh, I just released a song called Nerve um, with Gina Fontanella. She's uh, an American singer songwriter. She's a good friend of mine and she's been, uh, which is fantastic. Katy Perry sang one of her songs. Uh, I also just did a song with Brenly Brown. I've been experimenting. So to answer your question, I've been experimenting a lot. Brenly Brown is a country singer and, um, I would never have thought that I would ever do something in the country world, but it's kind of been a cool place to try. Um, and so, so I've done that. We, I put out a song called Start Again. And the, the biggest one of this year is called uh, I Want to Believe. And I think, the, I think the thing that will resonate with the fans the most with I Want to Believe is that the, the lyrics are quite on point with what's happening right now. You know, it, it's a positive song. It's, it's a dance track. It's uplifting. It makes you want to move. But deep down in the lyrics, there is that, you know, like... There is, there is a certain hint of, um, I guess, truth. And in every song that I write, there is something personal. But uh, I Want to Believe is one that I'm really focusing on. And yeah, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm writing lots of records. I, I almost have two albums ready to go. <laughs> so. Hey, that's phenomenal, especially for fans of yours out there. And at what point, you've just released one song that you just identified. Where can people pick up the songs as they come out and how can we keep updated of when you're releasing them? Yeah, so obviously social media. Um, uh, if you go to Twitter, it's just uh, at Tidy, T-Y-D-I. Facebook is T-Y-D-I Music, Tidy Music. Um, Instagram is Tidy, T-Y-D-I. Uh, that's where you'll just... Twitter, I'm just generally waking up talking silly stuff. Um, but if you want to find my music, I would I would say to head to uh, whatever you listen to music on. I, it's it's available on Spotify, on Apple Music, um, on Amazon, where, wherever you hear music. All of my new tracks, I make sure that it's available to everybody. So, uh, so let me let me ask you this: You've played for Zoo Brands in multiple cities. Um, you're no stranger to Southeast Asia. What are your favorite memories of playing in both Malaysia and Singapore? So I love this question. Uh, there was a show I did 
at Zouk where I didn't know there was going to be pyrotechnics and I didn't know you could even do that indoors. So I don't know if I'm, I, I, so I, I've, I've never seen it indoors. I have at big stadium shows that I've played, but there was this one show I played in Zouk, Singapore, that I can recall where I played a track and these are uh, like, like kind of like flames just started pouring down and no one warned me about it. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Um, also, I, I, I just love the layout. I mean, I think with whether it's Zouk Malaysia or Zouk Singapore or, um, you know, all of them, I, I like the, the layout and how it makes you, you can fit a lot of people in this club, but it makes everybody feel like they're at home and they're comfortable. It's just a beautiful venue to play at. And yeah. The guys will be loving to hear that because our, our tagline is the Zook family. So to make people feel at home will be special for everyone that resonates with over here. Um, yeah. I know, I know for you, you have, have a soft spot for Malaysia. You visited here many times socially. Tell us about what your loves of Malaysia are. Obviously the cuisine, you've got to love the Malaysian cuisine, right? Oh yeah. So, so, um, this is a first for an interview. I never usually talk about personal stuff, but I will. So uh, my fiance is Malaysian and um, thank you. And so uh, I'm no stranger to Malaysia because sometimes I head to KL just to hang out and visit family. And I love seeing the Petronas Towers. I love the KLCC. I, I love the, the food. Um, I love laksa. My favorite food in the world is laksa especially a seafood laksa and I love finding places in KL that are um, like a little bit that tourists wouldn't know sure where a local can show me that's that's really fun I, I really enjoy that so have you have you done a lot of the spaces like Batu caves have you done oh like yeah and KL Batu caves nearly nearly was the end of me <laughs> <laughs> so many stairs yeah, yeah it's, and, and, it's a tough one and it's steep as well yeah and so there i i once when i went to batu caves i brought a banana and gave it to the monkeys at the top because i wanted to actually see a monkey eat a banana so okay. dude i've got a story that they, they don't wait for you to give it to them they'll take it from you if they feel like it they're super <laughs> yeah nice in batu caves. yeah exactly so batu caves is fun and um some of the other things uh i, I do you still have the uh I know you have the, the cow tower. There was kind of a cool area underneath where there was like animals and things that was, was, was fun. But, um, uh, I found kale to have some really cool restaurants. And when I was there for a new year's Eve, there was a fantastic like fireworks display in the middle of the city. And I was watching it from uh, the top of a high rise and it was reflect all the fireworks were reflecting off the top of the buildings and through the glass and stuff. It was, it was awesome. KL, I mean, everyone who's from Malaysia will hurt, love that you have a soft spot. They'll love that you know the city well. Um, my obvious question is COVID time now. Uh, travel is banned. We're hoping to get lifted. The easiest question for me to ask you, seeing you've already ticked off the box of Laksa and everything else, is when are you going to come visit us again? Um, it, when I'm allowed to. I'm you're, Like, this, this conversation is making me miss KL so much. I'll, I'll tell you this, the, and I, I this is the truth. The very first city that I ever played in internationally in the world was KL. So I remember the day when I was a teenager and I got an email and it was a booking agent asking me to play in a different country. And I was jumping up and down like a schoolgirl, clapping my hands, like going, oh, someone in a different country wants to see me DJ. So KL was the first place that I was ever invited to play at outside of Australia. I had already been touring Australia, playing that market, playing all the cities. And then I played KL and then I've been back and back so much. It's just, it's just, it's a second home for me. So to answer your question, um, when I, I, I don't know when this quarantine stuff will end or when things will open up, but, but you better believe I am ready to be performing in KL and I want to be doing it soon. I really badly want that. 
So we, it, it, it will be a super honor for us to get you up to Genting, Zoo Genting, because obviously we only opened a year ago. Zoo Care has a great history, Singapore even longer, but it's about time we ticked you off and got you into the Holy Trinity, which is Zoo Genting. Um, we will be phenomenal to bring you back and uh, the fact that you love Malaysia will make it even a better homecoming for you. Tyson, look, it's very late where you are. We really appreciate your time. We can't wait for your mix. We're very excited. What kind of things can we hear in the mix? Classics, man. I'm gonna be playing. I'm gonna be playing all the classics. So, uh, and when I say all the classics, like stuff that I made from the last ten years. So, uh, and also some of my favorite songs that inspired me to be a DJ and a producer. So I will be. I will be playing uh, a combination of just stuff that I love. I like to say, just like every DJ show, whatever I want, whenever I want. You're a good man. Tyson, thanks so much for your time. We really appreciate it. We can't wait to see you either by the end of this year or early next year. And uh, the laksa's on me. All right. Seafood laksa. Seafood laksa. Whatever you like, my friend. <laughs> thanks so much, man. Hey, take care, brother. Cheers.